Hello, and this time we're looking at level two of the frequency response questions. They get a little bit harder here. Right, now, what is the Q factor of the two poles? Well, I'll go through this one. After you've done a few of these, you'll find out what the formulas for the various circuit configurations are, and it'll just be a case of looking up the relevant formula to use. But for this one, I'll just go through it from first principles. We've got a 47 nano farad capacitor there. We have an inductor, which is 47 millihenries, and we have a resistor, which is 2K4. Okay, now, the standard form for a second order response, and this is a second order response because we have two reactive components, a capacitor and an inductor, is something of the form um, hj omega is some numerator on the top, which we don't know and we don't really care about because we're just being asked about the poles, divided by the standard form of 1 plus j omega over q omega naught minus omega squared over omega naught squared. And omega naught is the resonant frequency in radians per second, and Q is the Q factor. So we have to try and make the response of this circuit fit that general form of equation. Right, this is a potential divider. Just about all of these things are potential dividers. Here, our potential divider, we have A on the input here, Z1, Z2, and ground, and this is the output, X, just like any other potential divider. And just like all potential dividers, the formula here is that X is A times Z2 over Z1 plus Z2. Uh, therefore, the gain, which would be X over A, is just Z2, the impedance on the bottom, divided by the total impedance, Z1 plus Z2. Here, our Z1 is that capacitor, and I'll just write it as 1 over J omega C, without putting the values in, because it saves a bit of ink. Z2 is the parallel combination of an inductor and a resistor. So that would be J omega L times R, over J omega L plus R, standard form of putting two components in parallel. Therefore, our H of J omega here has the form of Z2, which is J omega L R, divided by J omega L plus R, divided by Z1 plus Z2, which is 1 over j omega c plus j omega l r divided by j omega l plus r. And the first step with almost all of these things is to multiply by any term with an j omega in it that appears on the bottom of anything. Uh, here that would mean multiplying by j omega l plus r and multiplying by j omega c. I'll multiply by j omega l plus r first. Just multiply top and bottom by this term here, and that would give me j omega l r divided by j omega l plus r divided by j omega c plus j omega l r. And then I multiply through by j omega c on top and bottom, and that would leave me with minus omega squared LRC on the top, because J times J is minus 1, divided by, on the bottom here, I would get J omega L plus R plus, in fact, minus omega squared LRC. Now, if I divide top and bottom by R, that would give me minus omega squared LC divided by, the R would just become a 1, the J omega L would become J omega L over R, 
and the omega squared LRC term would become minus omega squared LC. This is now in the form that I was trying to get it in up here. You can just by inspection see by comparing this equation and this equation that we must have omega squared, omega naught squared, the resonant frequency squared, is 1 over LC. And from this term here, we can note that Q times omega naught must be R over L. Well, if omega naught squared is 1 over LC, then omega naught must be the square root of 1 over LC. And therefore, Q must be R divided by L times omega naught, which is just equal to R over L times the square root of LC, which would be R times the square root of C over L. And that is the expression I need to work out my Q factor. Right, back to the question. What is the Q factor of the two poles? Answer, it's the resistor, 2K4, multiplied by the square root of the capacitor, 47 nano, divided by the inductor, 47 milli. Great. It takes a little while the first time you do one, admittedly, but after a while there are a limited number of circuit configurations you can be asked about, and you'll find that the formulas are very similar for each one. This video is getting a bit long. I think I better do this one in two halves. See you in the next video.